Good Friday. Yesterday we looked at two scriptures. We looked at Acts 12, 7. We spent uh, most of our time on Peter and his faith allowing him to sleep when he was in jail. Today we're going to look at Paul and how his faith had grown from the Damascus Road to being able to be beat and put in jail and still sing praises to the Lord. You know, Peter was sleeping, but Paul, when he was in jail with Silas, was singing praises. You know, I, and I attribute that a little bit to the fact that it's important for us to have other Christians around us. Uh, you know, the Lord sent his uh, uh, disciples out two by two when he was alive, and he sent them out to minister into the villages and the byways uh, when he sent out the, the uh, disciples uh, in his ministry. And they came back and reported great things, but he sent them out two by two. And I think there's an important reason for that. And if you'll notice, I think the apostles stuck to that because Barnabas and Paul went out two by two. A lot of times they went out two by two. Why? To strengthen and encourage each other. And Silas was an important part of that. Let's read our scripture. But at midnight, Paul and Silas, two of them, were praying and singing hymns to God, and the prisoners were listening to them. Suddenly there was a great earthquake, so that the foundations of the prison were shaken, and immediately all the doors were opened, and everyone's chains were loosed or fell off. This last day of the week, we will look at the second of our two scriptures from the book of Acts. I think at this point you need to see the book is called by its full name in the New Testament. The book, the Acts of the Apostles. And that's what we're seeing, the Acts of the Followers of Jesus. The Acts of those people that didn't stop at Jesus' death on the cross, but because of the indwelling of God's Holy Spirit, the church continued. Jesus started out with a handful of men. He started out with 12 men, and one of them betrayed him. He started out with the New Testament church. You know, a lot of times it's so easy for churches in this time and place to get discouraged about the attendance and to get discouraged about what's happening uh, in and around them. And so we see that Jesus teaches us that we don't have to have the mega church. You start out and Jesus will grow the church. God will grow the church. And what grew the church was the interjection and the, and the infusion of God's Holy Spirit in the individuals that make up the church. And so we see that the Acts of the Apostles are a recording of God's own actions uh, in and on those that heard the Word of God uh, through the power of His Holy Spirit in the book of Acts. I know that Paul and Silas have just been abused and mistreated by those to whom they were trying to minister to. I don't know about you, but if I've been beaten and whipped and put in jail for preaching the gospel and trying to save people and tell them about uh, the, the saving grace of Jesus Christ, I'd be a little bit bent out of shape about being in jail. And what does Paul and Silas do? They don't have a pity party. They have a praise worship. At the midnight hour, they're, we're worshiping the Lord. How do we react to the injustices around us? And that's a big thing we have to look at today. There's a lot of injustices happening around us. There's a lot of weird things going on around us. And I'm just scared to death that the day after the election or uh, uh, thereabouts that we're going to see some real weird things happening in, uh, with people being angry and upset about things and about uh, what they think is an injustice. But how do you handle the injustices around you? You know, we talked about depression, and we talked about anxiety, and we talked about worry. And so how do you stop worry, and how do you stop uh, uh, anxiety? You have a worship service in yourself, within yourself. It starts in here through the power of God's Holy Spirit. You express it out there, and all the people in the jail were listening, and, and everybody was uh, listening to the hymns and the preaching and the praise service. It is so hard to not let our circumstances dictate if we worship God, yet we often let our feelings control us instead of letting God control us. You know, that's the thing we have to get a hold of. When we accept Jesus Christ as Lord, He controls everything, including our feelings. I am so tired of people letting their feelings run wild and having self-controlled feelings instead of God-controlled feelings. I do not know about you, but I know I would have been tempted to have a pity party, not a worship party, not a praise party. So how are you reacting to the things going on around you? How are you reacting? True worship shakes up life. Personal worship. Corporate worship. When is the last time your world was rocked and shook up 
in a praise worship service. And it may be just you and God in your prayer closet. Maybe just you and one other person. Look, this started out as a two-people thing and spread throughout the prison, and everybody started listening. Please also see that it did not happen in church, but in jail. I have noticed my public worship is, not, is, is only as moving and strong as my personal worship. And I want to hit you with that today, and I want you to understand something. You coming into this sanctuary, and the people that come into the sanctuaries of, of Bible-believing, God-fearing churches all over this nation are only going to have the worship experience they have in public worship if they have a private worship time. Today, seek to move your time in worship and have it rocked and shook up to the glory of God. Seek your time in worship and let your world be rocked. But know up front, you have to seek God on His terms, not yours. And let me hit you with that too. You don't get to dictate to God when you worship. You don't get to get, dictate to God how you worship. You worship according to the Word of God. We have a whole bunch of Christians out there that are trying to worship God their way. That's not the way you do it. You worship God His way or it's not going to be worship. It's plain and simple as that. You do it His way or you don't do it at all. Dear gracious Heavenly Father, let us worship you our way. Not our way, but your way. Let our way be a way, Lord, that uh, is parallel with your will for our lives. Let us never let our will and our feelings override you and your will and how you tell us to react. Thank you, Lord, for the time of worship. May we just have a time of worship. And may those listening have a time of worship in and through the scriptures and the dailies. Thank you for our time in worship today. In Jesus' name.